Today, we'll be going through the process of automating a portion of our trading using the Thinkorswim platform. Most traders on Thinkorswim don't even realize it's possible to create a trade based on a study parameter or a crossover. But that is exactly what we'll be doing in today's video. For this one, we'll be using a fairly simple example, submitting an order to buy the stock when there's a golden cross, and then to close that same stock when there's a death cross. If we were to actually come over here and take a look at my chart for just a second, we'll be specifically creating an order to buy the stock when there's a 50-day moving average crossover above the 200-day moving average. So this crossover right here. Once bought, we then want to sell the stock when the opposite occurs. When the 50-day moving average crosses below the 200-day moving average. So again, we want to submit the order to buy when there's a golden cross and then sell that stock when there's a death cross. Just remember that you can use any study or combination of studies that you want, but this is our example for today. This is more just to get you thinking about what's possible to do in here. Using this crossover alone to activate a trade isn't going to make a whole lot of sense, but please don't get too overwhelmed if it does seem confusing. That is completely normal. It's a lot to take in, but it is worth learning. Now, in order to begin, we're going to start by building out our buy ticket by coming up here to the very top of our screen and clicking on the last traded price for Apple. In the menu below, we'll then find and click on the buy button, which will then automatically build out a ticket to buy the stock down here towards the bottom. If this was just going to be a standard order, we would then fill out the number of shares we intended to buy, the price at which we wanted to buy it for, and then how long and when we wanted the order good for. But in order for us to add the study condition, we're going to need to start by coming over here to the far right hand side of the order ticket and then clicking on the little settings icon right here. That will then open up a little pop up window over here on the left hand side and then this is where we're going to be able to add our more advanced conditions. Those conditions could be based on time, on price, or in our case, a study crossover. So to begin, we're going to need to come down here to the condition section and then find the little box right below the word symbol and just click in that box. It'll then load the symbol of the stock that we're trading automatically. So in this case, Apple, which makes a whole lot of sense, but you could technically base the trade off of another stock symbol if you wanted to. But now that we've got Apple in there, we can then come over here to the right to the next box right below the word method. This will then allow us to set what we want this order to be based off of. And in this case, we want to base it off of a study and in order to start fresh, we can come over here to the right and click on the little box marked edit. That'll then open up another window that you might have seen before if you've ever made a scan within Thinkorswim. And this is where we can now add our study parameters, where we can now specify exactly what we want to happen before the order gets submitted. Now at the moment, there is already something in here. So in order to start fresh, let's go ahead and come over here to the right and delete whatever's in here. We can now come to the far left hand side and start adding our conditions. So remember what we're looking for for this buy order to be submitted is for the 50 day moving average to cross above the 200 day moving average. So if we start by coming up here and selecting a condition, that's going to be a study condition. We can then search for the simple moving average by coming up here to the search box and simply typing in simple, then go ahead and click on it in the list below simple moving average. You'll then see the simple moving average study automatically populates over here on the left hand side. And now we can adjust the parameters. Because at the moment, if we were to look down here in the length section, it defaults to the 9 day moving average. So I need to go ahead and change that from 9 to 50. And that's really the only thing I need to adjust over here on the left. But now coming over here to the right, I can specify that I'm looking for the 50 day moving average to cross above the 200 day moving average. So to find the 200 day moving average, we'll again come up here to select a condition. It's going to be a study condition. Within the search box at the top, we'll again search for the simple moving average and then go ahead and click on it in the list below. Just like before, we now need to adjust the input parameter. And in this case, we're adjusting it from the nine period average to the 200 period average. But now that that's done, we can then come down here below and hit the save button. And that's really it for the opening parameter if that was all I was looking for. If I wanted to add additional studies to this, I could come up here and hit add condition. 
and then I could continue adding the things that I wanted to look for before the order is submitted. But in my case, this is all I wanted to look for, the 50-day moving average crossing above the 200-day moving average. And also, I'll mention the way it knows it's the 50-day and the 200-day is because up here at the top, it currently says D for day. If you were to click on that, you're actually going to see a little menu come up where we could adjust this to a minute chart or a two minute chart or three minute chart, really whatever it is you wanted to use. But in this specific example, we do want it to be the daily moving average. So we're going to come back over here and click away from that. And now in order to save this, we could just come down here below and hit the OK button. So now what it's saying is it's looking for this study to be true for the 50 day moving average to cross above the 200 day moving average before this order up here above is submitted. So in order to buy the stock with a limit price of 153.92, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what I'm gonna do is actually flip this over from a limit order to a market order. And now what I'm saying is if this ever happens, go ahead and submit a market order to buy the stock immediately. And if I was ever confused, I could actually scroll down to the bottom of this window here and it actually gives me a little description of exactly what we're about to do. Right here it says wait until the following condition is satisfied before the order is submitted to buy the stock. So wait for the 50 period moving average on the SMA to cross above the 200 period moving average. And now to save that we'll just come down here below and hit the save button. And if all I wanted was a buy order to buy the stock if that ever happened, then this is all I would have to do. I could just come down and hit confirm and send and place the order. But in my case, I want to say that if this ever happens, if I ever buy the stock, I automatically want to sell it if the reverse is true. If the 50 day moving average then crosses below the 200, I want to exit this position. So to do that, we're going to come back over here to the far left hand side and flip this over from a single order and instead say first trigger sequence. So I'm now saying that if the first order ever fills, I want to activate a second order. And now in order to build out the second order, I could just simply right click on the green line here and say create opposite order. Or I could come up here to the very top of the screen where again we see the current price of Apple. Just go ahead and click on that. And this time instead of selecting buy, we're going to click on sell. And now down below, you can see our brand new order ticket. This time it is an order to sell the stock. And remember, this one is only going to get submitted if the opening trade fills. And now in order to add those parameters, we'll again come over here to the far right hand side of the order ticket and click on the settings icon. We'll get the exact same window as before over here on the left hand side. And let's go ahead and begin by coming down here to the conditions window, clicking in the little box below the word symbol. After it autofills the stock that we're trading, we can then come over here to method. We'll need to come up and make sure we're selecting a study method. And again, we'll come over here and select edit down below. In order to start fresh, let's go ahead and come up here to the top where we've got the default study parameter. Let's go ahead and delete that. We'll now add our condition by coming over here to the left and selecting add a condition. Just remember for this one, we're looking for the 50 day moving average to cross below the 200 but it's gonna be almost identical to the previous example. So let's come up here and select a condition. It's gonna be a study condition. We'll search for the simple moving average just like before and then go ahead and click on it in the list below. We'll adjust this from the nine period average to the 50. However, in this one, we're gonna be looking for it to cross below the 200 period simple moving average. So we can look for the simple moving average We'll go ahead and adjust this from 9 to 200. And now that that's done, we'll just come down below and hit the save button. We can now see the parameter just up here above in the little conditions window. And you can again see it is defaulted to the daily simple moving average. Once I'm happy with that, I'll just come down here below and hit OK. And again, now I'm saying I only want to submit the order to sell this share of stock if the 50 day moving average crosses below the 200. So if there is a death cross, but I'm not quite done yet. I do need to come up here and adjust this over from a limit order to a market order. Since technically I have no idea what Apple's going to be trading for whenever that crossover happens. But now that we've got everything filled out correctly, everything looks good. In order to actually place this, we can just come down here below and hit the save button. There we now have our opening and closing ticket built out. 
And now to place it, we'll just come down here below and hit confirm and send, and then hit send. There you can now see our open orders directly on the chart. I've got my buy order right here, as well as my sell order. And we could also keep track of that by coming back over here to the monitor page. And right up here at the top, we can see those opening and closing tickets. You could also see the parameters that we set by coming over here to the far right hand side and clicking on the little gear icon here. And now down below, we can see exactly what we set. So right here are those same parameters that we built out earlier. And right here, it gives you a little description of what this order is waiting for. But if we were to exit out of this, remember going back to the chart for just a second, what this trade is looking for or waiting for is for this blue line, the 50 day moving average to cross above the gold line here, the 200 day moving average. Whenever that does happen, a market order is going to be submitted to buy one share of Apple. And then if that happens, if I ever buy that one share of Apple, I'm automatically going to put out an order to close out of that same stock if the reverse happens. So it's then going to wait for the blue line to cross back below the gold line to exit out of the trade. But that's just one way you can create a much more advanced order within Thinkorswim. And again, you can base these trades off of nearly any type of condition or any indicator that you want. Hopefully after all that, you feel at least a little bit more comfortable with the process, but if not, that is totally understandable. But for those of you still watching who are still looking to learn more about TOSS, you might find this next video helpful as well. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you on the next one.